Hey everyone, welcome back to another painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models, shall we? Yes. Adam, you missed a spot. Shout out to Cody Rue. Let's continue painting some Gene Stealer Cult. I will talk about my life and what's going on next edition. Yes. Let's get started. Yes. Hey everyone, so welcome back to another painting with Jay. I'm working on some Gene Stealer Cults. Today I'm going to be painting this Patriarch. Um, yeah. Painting the Patriarch. And so, I've been having a lot of fun painting up my Gene Stealer cults. I've been painting obsessively. To the point where, like, I, I've given myself a four month soft deadline and we're gonna see how long it takes. You know, it's no, I'm not saying I'm rushing by any chance, but uh, I'm, I'm kicking butt just cause I, it, there's been not a lot to do, right? Right now, my girlfriend and I, we work on the house. We go for walks. Um, and, um, yeah, like, as I said, we, and I paint, right? Right now with the whole COVID situation. Um, so right now, I'm just going to let you know, I'm just cleaning up the, I painted the, uh, the metal sewer drain. I started off by painting that, because I'll show you in a second. But uh, just because so that way today, for this painting with Jay, I can get a lot done. I found that this was, I painted a, um, I just, I sat down and I painted a patriarch, um, a couple days ago and I just, I was in the groove, put, listened to some music and I found that the pipe, the sewer pipe was the limiting step of this model, especially the fact that it's a huge part that you paint metallic and then a huge shade. Uh, we are getting to the summertime right now and it's humid. I find that my shades take a little bit longer to dry as do the, um, the contrast paints. So I figured i get these done now, get it shaded, and that way I can just start today afresh and get, I, by the end of this, I should have most of this model painted. Maybe some more details left and stuff, but let's start. So we'll start off by taking, of course, um, purple, some uh, Magos purple. And let's get the uh, the brain area of him painted. Oh, I'm on this gigantic hand uh, the hand tool. So, start with Mago's purple. Uh, for Mago's purple, I'm gonna do straight from the paint pot. The reason being, um, it's a very light purple. As you can see here, this is straight from the pot. It goes on very light. So if you thin this down with uh, you know, contrast medium you're gonna find that it gets way too light, way too fast. It's practically almost a flesh tone, you know, after a little bit of thinning. So, there we go. And I'm just gonna get around his head, a little bit of his face. I'm gonna blend the face in a few minutes with um, the other purple that I have. But let's just paint this. And it's cool. So the brain I'm going to do is a little bit, just a little bit lighter. I've been really, really loving these contrast paints. Now I know it, I'm not painting to the highest standard, but I'm okay with that. You know what? This will be a fun army. I just really wanted to sit down and paint an entire army with these contrast paints and give them a good, fair test, good, fair shake, you know? And I think that's what I've been doing. And I think that's been a fair assessment. As you can see, like the, the, it comes out a little bit like almost like comic booky style. I like it. So we're done there. Now we're going to go with some shyish purple. Now for the shyish purple, I am going to take some uh, contrast medium and thin it down because the shyish purple is a very dark purple. It comes out very, very dark out of the, the paint pot. So I'm going to thin it down. And that way I can get a nice middle tone purple. And for this color scheme, I'm basically painting the standard color scheme um, of the Patriarch from the, the uh, Codex. All right, so about a one-to-one -one mix of shyish purple to contrast medium. Let's get started. Okay, so this part, of course, the hands, the gaps in the in his armor. And 
and his feet and his face. All right, so there's his hand. I should really start with the face, so I'm going to switch there in a second. But uh, as you can see, it just goes on really well. I'm just going to... There we go. So, what I'm going to do here is take some of this shyish purple and just do a quick wet blend with the Magos purple. Just blend it towards the so the, the bottom of the face will be darker and the brains will be a little bit lighter. neck of course will be maybe a shyish purple but I've been really it's been weird painting over white um, but uh, hmm, I missed all there I pulled an Adam Adam you missed a spot um, but I've been enjoying it especially just smacking slapping paint on these models and they, it doesn't take a very long time it's been a lot of fun. So I spent about an hour and maybe an hour and a little bit of maybe some change on um, on another patriarch. He's basically done. I just got to finish basing him, but I'll show you him. So the magic of television. This is the color scheme that I'm going with basically. As you can see, pretty simple. I think it's effective. Looks a little cartoony. I like it. I think it's definitely not worthy of a tabletop for a tournament. And so, of course, he'll be my reference point. I've also painted both familiars already. I painted each one of them in about 20 minutes, not even, um, with drying time. It was minutes. And I really enjoyed that. It's been really cool. They're tiny models, obviously. The little familiars are pretty tiny. But uh, it's been a lot of fun using these contrast paints, give them a good test. They do work. You know what, they, they, they're, uh, they're great if you wanna just slap paint on a model and get it done. I do find that because it's just the one single step, you get, you get a lot done obviously quickly and it makes you feel good and then you wanna paint more. You know, and before long you have a, an army of painted models. I've been working on this army for uh, just about, what was it, know, five weeks now? Just about to start my, you know, about five weeks in. And at the five week mark, I have 80, about 85 models painted. Which is not bad at all. Um, for an army that I've been working on for five weeks. So I've done all my troop choices. All the troop choices are done. I have uh, 50 neophytes. I have 20 acolytes. And I have 10 brew brothers. So. That's a good start of an army, I find. And what else? Um, I've also painted two Acolyte uh, Icon Wards. Mm -hmm. um, and I've painted one Patriarch so far. I'm working on this Patriarch. And... I've painted two familiars. So already mid 80s. Now all the models in this army, now obviously, and I'm fully aware that not all of them will have equal painting times, right? Some of them are simpler than others. Um, my total model count's about 125. So I'm already about two thirds of the way done my army. And I'm working on it for five weeks. And that's really a testament to what these paints can help you do.
because that's what they're designed to do. Make the process a lot simpler, make the process a lot easier, and more time efficient. And you know what? You're not going to win best painted using just these paints, probably not. That's okay. You can take this army to a tournament and it will definitely fit the color scheme, uh, sorry, the painting requirements, and people aren't going to be mad at that seeing it on the tabletop. It's, it's going to be a fun army to represent, you know, to play with. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, frankly. I can't wait to get these onto the tabletop and play a game. Now, what edition will I be playing? Who knows? By the time I get to play a game against my friends Dave and Stu, uh, Dave and, I know Dave is really raring to go and play as well, as am I. We're just kind of figuring out what to do right now in these situations because we are still, you know, in phase one of reopening of a pandemic. Right? We can't go play willy-nilly at the store right now or, you know, and, and I haven't seen Dave since the pandemic started. He, and he has young kids. I don't ever, I'm a public sector employee, public service employee or whatever they're called and I don't want to get his kids sick. You know, the number of cases in Peterborough right now are small. They're quite small. I think it's uh, only eight current active cases. So, you know what? Cool. My only fear is that eventually they're gonna tight they're gonna loosen the restrictions, right? And Peterborough, where I live, is a, quite the uh, it's a tourism area in the summertime, right? People love to go cottaging and stuff, and so I'm wondering how bad the the effect will be from the cottagers coming into this area upon you know, phase two of reopening of the, of the province or phase three. I don't know which phase they'll be coming in, but, uh, you know what I mean? Because they'll be coming from other areas. And, and right now, Peterborough isn't, we're not necessarily a closed system entirely, but, uh, we're not that open in the sense that, you know, people aren't traveling that much to and from Peterborough right now, which is good. So it's been helping to keep the, uh, areas relatively contained. Right? So, yeah, we'll see. And I'm worried about when they start allowing people to really come to this area. That's when you'd expect a spike, another one, right? Because a bunch of people who could be potentially infected are going to come in contact. And I said, I work in the public service, so. I could definitely be one of the ones in, you know, trouble. And that's not cool. We'll see. We can't live our lives completely in fear forever, right? We cannot. Um, but uh, we'll see. I really do want to play games with, with both Dave and Stu. Uh, I've noticed that they're really painting along too, and they're, maybe, they're probably watching Painting with Jay right now. You know, maybe they're watching this video because they're both painting their miniatures in anticipation of a game coming up and ninth edition. I'm excited. As I said, the uh, what they've been announcing for Games Workshop has been interesting. The table top sizes kind of threw me off, but of course, they do sell odd size mats for Combat Patrol and stuff. So or Kill Team. So maybe that has something to do with it. But. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of curious what will happen with it. I'm going to still probably stick with my normal tabletop sizes. Maybe try a smaller one. We'll see. The stuff that GW has been releasing or pre-releasing of the information has been really cool. The one, as I discussed in my last video, the one rule I really, really, really hope gets fixed is monsters, creatures, and vehicles, and terrain. And the, what I call the floor is lava rule. Um, you know, I don't know. The only way terrain really mattered in this last edition was you could hide guys on terrain. If your opponent had a monstrous creature, you could just be like laughing at a car, you know, a close combat carnifex was so easily able to be avoided. You just stuck them, your people two inches off the ground. And then you could just laugh at the close combat carnifex for the whole game. 
because the close combat carnifex can't go an inch above ground. So that made no sense. All right, and I get it that people were laughing a few editions ago with the people on bikes driving up the stairwells and stuff or driving vertically up buildings. All right, I get that's kind of funny, but monster creatures can climb or crash through. Like, I, I don't understand why a... Um, why a Imperial Knight, who's taller than the building, can't attack someone on the building. If they're taller than the building, they should be able to reach the people on the building by just swinging. You know? It made no sense. It made no sense. I'm hoping that rule gets fixed, and if it doesn't, so be it. I will adjust accordingly. I won't cry myself to sleep, but that's gonna... There we go. Purple's done. So we're 13... We're, what? 15 minutes into the video. I'm gonna take a small drink. my drink here let's continue see like I'm having such a good time I I just start painting and it's drying but I'm gonna have fun because I can still blend some paint colors together hmm I did the only thing is with painting white is that I do find you can miss the occasional spots and you don't realize it till after pulling an atom here there we go. There we go. Looks good. Otherwise, I'll clean up after. But, um, look at that. Like, we're 15 minutes into the video. And after the next color, right, the next color is going to take a long, this is the most dominant color on the model. But, you'll notice that after it's done, wow, like this, this thing starts really taking life. And, we're at three color minimum already. So if someone said, you know, hey, you need three color minimum, I could be like, hey, this model is three color minimum. I'm only been painting it for 15 minutes, you know, not bad. Other than I did slap on the, the, uh, the metallic piping color uh, earlier today and then hit it with a shade. So as I said, that will be a, that's a step that if I get to it later, um, it'll be a time constraint that I can get that done easier. As I said, we'll see how much of this model we can get done in, you know, the hour that I've allocated to this painting with Jack. And you'll see, it's been really cool working with these contrast paints. The uh, new Admech models came out this week. I'm not buying them. I decided that. I'm going to wait. I was originally thinking of taking a step back from painting my Genestir cult and maybe painting them up, which I'm still thinking about, but I don't think it's going to... I think I should just save my money for a couple months, get all my Genestir cult models painted, because I, I still have fast attack choices for the Admec Army that I painted up before starting my Genestir Cult. And I just don't want to break what I'm doing right now. My focus on Genestir Cult. You know? At this rate, I should have my Genestir Cult done during the summer. And then I can take a step back to Admec paint. Couple squads of them. Now, my I am going to guess it's going to happen though, is that because the rules have not been presented for eight, for ninth edition yet, I have the feeling that both the new guys will be really awesome in ninth edition. And if that's the case, because why wouldn't they be if they're coming out around the same time as ninth edition? I'd be very shocked. And if they are there might be just no availability for a few months. You know that happens. Every time the new cool models come out, everyone figures out what's good and what's not and buys all the good ones and, and then it takes months to get them again. Which happens, if, that ha if that's the case, I'll figure out something else in the meantime to paint. Right? Yeah. Uh, this is gonna be the dominant color. This is just um, a 
uh, Killian Green, I was called. But um, I'm okay with that because I'm really enjoying this Gene Stealer cult, and I don't want to break my focus. You know, even if I have to paint for, even if I have to paint my Ad Mac for a couple weeks, I still just really want to paint these guys. It's been a lot of fun working on them for about five weeks, and getting, uh, again, I've already painted. Now, as I said, the models are not equally uh, complex, right? Because I painted Troops Choices, and I batch painted Troops Choices. But... I am, so right now, I, I, you know, I'm, I have 40 models left roughly right now, and they're, uh, 15 of them are fast attack choices, they're the, the jackals, and those 40, and uh, 10 of them are aberrants that I've painted up, um, I've pre-painted up a chunk of them, like half of them, I'm not done, and uh, an abominant. Right. So what I've decided to do was to make this mo a more efficient painting process is before I started painting my um, Gene Stir called Army, I put a list together of all of the models that are similar in paint color that I can batch paint together, you know? Looking at the doesn't matter the size of the model, the uh, just the, it's the color, the main color scheme on the models, and I was able to break up my army accordingly, and it's actually become quite efficient. So, and I already know what I'm going to do next, and and after that as well. Um, so, for example, the all the acolytes. Of the same color scheme, right? Makes sense. All the neophytes, same color scheme, makes sense. In fact, they're uh, not the same exact colors, but very similar. I could have painted them all together, but I just it was easier just to paint, you know, 50 models and then 20. Uh, plus the skin tones were slightly different between the acolytes and the neophytes. Um, so, acolytes and neophytes, done. The Brood Brothers, one set of colors, done. All right, paint the 10, done. Next up, we have these guys. So I have the two... Now, I didn't batch paint them. Uh, well, I kind of batch painted the familiar and the the, the, one, the one group of familiars and the uh, the other patriarch. But I wanted to save this one for my painting with So I... You know, just can get one set of colors out. Paint, um, you know, paint the models. Done. So the patriarch and the familiars... The patriarchs and the familiars. One color scheme, right? Done. Because the familiars are such as many patriarchs. Makes sense. So that's that, this one. So after this group is done, the next group is a Nexos, Clamavis, um, the, the two HQs, um, the Magus and the Primus, right? They're all four assembled, and primed, and they're all going to be a very similar color scheme. So I'm going to just batch paint all those four together. You know, that'll be my next painting with Jake, probably. If uh, if I haven't finished them within the week, and I'm I'm filming a painting with Jay once a week, as I as I like to do, and I kind of just paint as much as I can in between as well. Um, but that's my goal. So then by the end of the next painting with Jay at, at latest, uh, could be even earlier, I'm gonna have pretty much all my, uh, my HQs done, minus my Abominant, which I'm gonna paint after that, the next wave. So the next group that I'm gonna paint um, after the, the four HQs, sorry, the, the two HQs and two elites, is the Aberrants and the Abominants. Right? Everything looks this, it's all one big color scheme. An Abominant is just a big Aberrant. So, 
that'll get that done. So now within a couple steps from now, I'm gonna have all my HQs painted, all my elites painted, and all my troops painted. And all this should easily be by the end of this month. The way I'm going, right? So I'll be two months into my painting challenge. And that's well over a hundred models. And it would be all my HQs, elites, and troops completed. That's not bad, isn't it? I don't think that's too bad. Not bad, right? And so that leaves my fast attacks, which are only like four models. Not fast attacks, sorry, but heavy support, which are four models. My fast attack choice is uh, 20. About 20 models. And I'm two months into my four month soft deadline. The reason why I say soft deadline is because if I don't make it, I don't really care. I'm, because uh, I'm in the home stretch now, I'm not really caring about timelines, right? Because I don't have a lot left. I really don't. I hope all of you in internet land are feeling the same kind of cool feeling I am. That uh, when, when society returns to quasi normal again, I'm going to paint a bit still, but I'm not going to have that much left to paint. I'm seizing the moment to get a lot of my painting done, so that way when I can get back and see friends, I'm going to play some games and learn the next edition and have some fun. Look at that. We're 27 minutes in. Twenty seven minutes. Um you know, this is it's gonna be cool. I'm really looking forward to it. And then maybe, I said, maybe I'll buy some of uh, the new Anmec models. Maybe I'll buy some of the new Necron models. I have, you know, 4,000 points of Necrons. But, I can't wait to play. That's the one thing I really miss playing. I've had, I. Months ago, I was supposed to play a game with Dave, and it got it just we couldn't get it in. And I, what I do is I have the army, uh, just to save time. I always have my army set up on the table before the player even shows up. Usually, my friends, because back when I used to film battle reports, it always showed that obviously I wasn't being biased or I didn't tailor the armies where the army was set. In many cases, I even pre-filmed my list portion. Um, and so I had, I've had this army on my, my table, just standing there presented as I normally do. I've had that for four, three and a half months now. And they deserve to be played with. They deserve to be tested on the battlefield. I don't care if they win or lose. I don't care. Of course, by the time the next, um, who knows if it'll be the right amount of points. I might have to tweak my army. Um. If any adjustments happen, you know, between depending on which edition I play my next game with, and I understand that there there's a chance I've already played my last game of eighth ed edition, and if so, cool. But I really just want to play. Just want to play, and uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see. When will that be? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully soon.
Hopefully soon. Cool, there we go. I just go through the tail, the head, the little crest on the head. Cool. And uh, yeah, see? These contrast paints are fun. They are definitely fun. I find because of the one step approach, they are really fun that I can just power through stuff and it feels good it really feels good that sense of accomplishment just drives you to want to paint more you know and they don't work for everything I will be painting vehicles eventually and I'll be painting them using primarily an airbrush I guess to save myself time on that one. Perfect. You know, in that way. Um, what's this saying? Yeah, I'll use an airbrush to paint the, uh, the vehicles. But before I paint the vehicles, I'm just gonna paint a lot of guys. Hold up. So I'm just gonna take the model off screen for a second because I need to hold the model pretty close to me when I'm getting the, the tail. There we go, see? Looking pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick dry brush of um, a light purple on the hands just to bring out the, uh, the detail. It is an HQ, so if I take an extra step, hands the feet, it just makes the areas pop a little bit. Cool, there we go. So, one st another step down. <laughs> Let's take just a quick dry brush, uh, some, where is it? My purple, my light purple, some of the Lucius Lilac. And I'm just going to do a very light, gentle dry brush over the hands and the feet just to bring out the raised surfaces. Watch this, just see that? Look at that. Makes it pop a little bit more. Oh, yeah, that looks awesome. Um, Brings out the, uh, the just the, the raised surfaces a little bit. A little more contrast. lilac so we're 34 minutes in I'm talking while doing this so it slows me down slightly you know but as you can see it uh, definitely There we go. 
Cool. Let's do uh, black, I guess. Yeah, black will be the next dominant color. Let's do black. And then we'll uh, reds who have time. So, Black Templar. I, yeah. It's really cool. Let me take a quick drink. 35 minutes in, 25 minutes left. But you see, I'm just applying a single coat. In some areas, a quick dry brush. But, uh, we're telling me that this doesn't feel, like it, it's really easy to feel a sense of accomplishment. Productiveness, you know, productivity. Because I'm like, yeah. You know, it's just easy to feel that because this amount of time you get a lot done. This model is only what I don't know, 170 points on the battlefield, but still. He's an HQ. He's a very important addition, or very important uh, model to keep in most Gene Sealer cult armies. You know? And so I would always... I have two of them. Now, the only thing is with Gene Sealer cult models is the characters, you can't include two of the same character in the same detachment. So I have to run at least two different detachments. Um to run both these guys. That's okay. Excellent. I'll definitely try to play in some tournaments. My only concern is that when life returns to normal, I work a lot of weekends, and my job has temporarily been, um, the weekends have been suspended while we were going through this COVID crisis. And so the irony is, of course, you like the gas prices are the cheapest they've ever been, but I can't go anywhere. Flights are the cheapest, can't fly anywhere. And uh, I'm the most available, but I can't do anything, you know? And I, I can't go anywhere and see anyone or do anything. And when life returns back to normal, so will my job, right? And uh, when that happens, I won't have the same availability anymore. I will not be available as much for the, the tournaments and the events and the games. And that's why, as I said, I'm just going to take advantage of as much time painting right now as I can and get these models painted, have a great time doing it, and next time I'm available to play against Stu or Dave or anyone, Trevor or just my gaming, any of my gaming friends, I will be able to seize the moment and play some games with them using some cool painted miniatures. Again, I don't care if I win, I don't care if I lose. I just wanna use these miniatures on the tabletop and have a cool painted army playing with these rules, you know, and having fun. That's awesome. The reason why I'm intentionally leaving some at the end, the edges, is I'm going to be doing a little red and, and orange, as you saw in my previous one. Um, yeah, just, there we go. From the tail. 
just those. Oh, there we go. So those three claws. Do, 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 one, two, three. Other side. And I would not vote for this army, this model, for the nicest painted. I wouldn't. But would I be happy to play with it on the tabletop? 100%. That's the important part. You know? That I with this and it's not my usual standard but oh my goodness this has been the most fun I've had and most the, the other than I was unemployed years ago for a short period of time between my degrees and I painted a lot of orcs that summer I tried to knock out 10 orcs a day I painted up like I think it was like 120 orcs in a month it was really cool but I don't have that opportunity again because um, I am working still you know, not Monday to Friday, as I mentioned. Pretty much a nine to five job, which I really love. It makes me really want to just keep working a nine to five Monday to Friday job. Um, yeah. But, there we go, Blackstone. Let's do reds. And these paints really last a long time, as I said. They, I'm really shocked. I'm. Painted 80 something models, and I'm still not even close to needing a refill. So, the reds, I'm just going to do a quick blend. So, from here to here. Um, I really enjoyed painting these models and it feels fun. It's just so much fun. So contrast. Jay's overall opinion, I like them. They're a very cool tool. For most people they're not going to be the be all end all, but for somebody like me who just really wants to paint up an army quickly, have a, a decent color scheme, great. Right? Look at, you know, if I had a tournament coming up and I had 40 models to paint, I would just grab the contrast paint and go. You know? Yeah, loving it. The red is really nice. The thing is, I haven't played in, in really any tournaments with, with um, an army that is painted using contrast. I would love to see a fully painted Space Marine army with contrast paints. I bet they'd work pretty well. There's nice flat surfaces. The tanks, not as much. As I said, this definitely works on smaller models, I'm noticing, but not the bigger ones. And that's okay. Um, but the bigger models doesn't, doesn't seem to work on large, you know, flat surfaces. So, uh, I'm just going to take some orange and keep going. So we're 43 minutes in. And would you not agree that the model itself is almost done? i got to do the basing. Um, and that's why I figured my time. I'm just going to paint some skulls after, and I'm doing some, techni some uh, technical paints on the um, rusted pipe. Like, I'll do some... Some corrosion. There we go. It's the very edge of the blades. Some orange. To brighten it up a little bit. I think they just announced today or yesterday that the next uh, the next book will be out soon. The one with the uh, Fab Fabius Bile. So the next, I'm guessing the next six weeks are really going to be a full amount of uh, a lot of releases. You know, a 
lot of um, one or I guess two or probably there's gonna be another couple um, psychic awakening cool done another couple psychic awakening books and probably another couple all right I'm just gonna take some blue white quickly some white paint and paint the eyes and then I'll go quickly over them with yellow and repeat uh, I just need my fine detail brush which I completely just misplaced Remember an hour ago though, when I, this model was I had one color on it. Yeah, it's only this to dry a little bit, and I'm going to clean up just the... The thing is, sometimes the paint settles a little out, and you just see the white marks, and that's okay. As I said, when there, you can just go back later and clean it up slightly. But, um... Cool. This guy is really... yellows paint the yellow so in yellow 47 minutes in so after today I'll just have to base it you know using my my uh, astro granite earth or astro granite whatever debris Good. This is awesome. So, get that in. Done. So, the model itself, done. Right? Done. This is a pretty simple color scheme, but this is a contrast level paint job. I'm not going to say amazingly painted, but you know what? It looks pretty cartoony, and I like it, and I'd play this on the tabletop. It definitely is more than three colors, for sure. Now I'm just going to add some weathering, and uh, between right now and next video, of course, I'll just paint the skulls, base it. Uh, in the end, it should look pretty close to this one, as you can see here. Um, and then I just got to paint the rim. Cool. So let's just take some a few minutes and add some weathering effects. So I'm going to do some... Uh, the oxidation, the oxidation, the hyalic oxide. But this is what I love to do. This is it's very cool to just take a unpainted model. End of the video. There's paint on it, and. Add some hyalic oxide. Whatever water would build really build up on the model. Get some building there. Just wherever the you know water would really pool. It'll add a little bit of an aging look to it. The particular bottle that I got of my favorite color, Brass Scorpion, 
is very orangey. As you can see here, it's very orangey. I don't know why. The previous one I had was really was a little bit darker, more red. Uh, this one tends to be very orangey, so it's different. But I don't mind it. Just not. It's a little off from my preference, but yeah, whatever. But I'm excited. Let's. I can't wait to to get the official rules for uh, for ninth edition. And figure out uh, play and play some games for how to play it. Keep going, right? Having fun. So we're 50 minutes in. 50 minutes in. And uh, I think this model's looking pretty cool. Looking pretty cool. So now I'll take some bone and might as well just start painting the skulls on the base. So one hour, this has been a pretty easy demonstration of how effective the contrast paints can be. As long as you have a, I feel with the contrast paints, as long as you have a set, you know, a game plan, an attack plan in your mind, and you just, you know what to go to, one step to the next step to the next step to the next step, um, especially, you know, I, I paint, this is not my first model of this army that I painted. I really know what the color scheme is going to be. I find that this is really efficient, really easy, really efficient. And um, as I said, it's, it's an easy way to save yourself a lot of time because I, I know what step, you know, I know what color I'm going to grab and then I know what next color I'm going to grab. And when one's done, just grab the next one and go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty easy. This is not, this, uh, I don't have the bone tone for, um, for the contrast paints. I didn't figure I'd need it. Oh man, if I had like a skeleton army, oh, those contrast, the contrast paints would have been amazing. Right? I'm guessing a lot of people are just using those. There we go. I'm gonna run out of things to paint in a second, so I'm gonna probably end it after the skull because I'll need to let the Ushabti bone um, heal uh, completely dry before I uh, get to the next step. Look at that in 52 minutes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. As I said, I'll hit this with a shade. And there's the basing. Life's good. Life is good. So, let's put this down for now because I'm going to have to let the, uh, the Shabdi bone dry before I hit it with an Agrax Earth shade. And let's end here with a pretty much finished patriarch yay so that concludes another painting with jay as always i really hope you got a lot of stuff done you enjoyed painting along with me and you're reading a world of unpainted models as you can see i had a lot of fun i pretty much finished up a, a patriarch model maybe another you know 10 20 minutes of working on him he'll be all done good for the game ready for the tabletop it'll be cool and then on to the next set which as i said should be a combination of hqs and elites Get them done with uh, so the next painting with Jay will either be them or the ones after that. We'll see. I'll just keep going, keep painting as I can, as much as I can as possible, and get these guys done. I'm excited. This is my last new big army, and then it's just you know a few models left for each army, and then getting them done. I should be done this year. I'm really confident I should be done all my models, all my armies this year. It'll be a good year. It's gonna be 2020. It's gonna be one of the few good things about this year. Just taking advantage of the times and. I hope you all in internet land are staying safe and healthy. As always, this is brought to you by my Patreon campaign. Huge thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. You can see their names go by my heads because of them that I keep making these videos. And um, I'll see you next week. So stay tuned for more Painting with Jay. Just like some Jason. Happy painting. Me.